In June 2018, the son of 68-year-old Cindy Testament drove to her home as he had not heard from his mum for a number of days. He walked into the kitchen and noticed that his mother was lying on the ground and the whole scene looked quite suspicious. He immediately went outside and called the police. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Um, I, my mother is dead. Um, I, uh, I just walked in to her house. I haven't heard from her in two days. And I came over to check on her. Um, she is lying on the floor in the kitchen. Um, I believe she was uh, either assaulted or, or murdered. Um, I didn't get close to her, but there is a gun on her kitchen table. Uh, her door it was unlocked when I came in, and her car is missing. She has a, a home security system uh, on her door, and the last thing that I saw on the home security system was a man getting into her car and driving it away. Cindy's son showed surveillance footage to the police about an unidentified man interacting with his mother. Police were unable to identify this man immediately, but they knew that Cindy's car had been stolen, so they decided to investigate that first. Police started their investigations by interviewing neighbors. One neighbor said that a lady called Judy Slepchik, who lived across the road from Cindy, had not been seen for about three months. This immediately raised suspicions with the police. Police obtained a search warrant for Judy Slepchik's place because now not only were they investigating the murder of Cindy Testament, they were now looking for a missing person. What they discovered was that Judy Slepchik was a known drug addict and she had a stepson called Ryan McGuire. The search of Judy's home proved empty, so they decided to search for Ryan Maguire. And what they did find was Ryan Maguire had a criminal record and they found a mugshot. When they compared this mugshot against the surveillance footage, it was a match to the man that was interacting with Cindy Testament. When police tracked down Cindy Testament's vehicle, they discovered that it had been sold to an unsuspecting family. Now police need to find Ryan Maguire. Police knew that Ryan was a drug addict and would want to stay locally so he could obtain the drugs that he needed. Cindy Testament's son also noticed that his mother's credit cards were still being used, so he was alerting the police to locations where the credit card was used and the surveillance footage captured Ryan living it up on Cindy Testament's credit cards, buying everything he needed, and what they then discovered was that he was staying at a local motel. Police watched the motel for a few days, then discovered that Ryan was staying there. They then surrounded the area and then arrested Ryan Maguire without incident. When police searched Ryan's motel room, they found credit cards and other cards belonging to Cindy Testament as well as Judy Slepchik. They then took Ryan Maguire into an interrogation room and this is the first interaction between the police and Ryan Maguire. Hey, what's going on? Anybody get a cigarette man? Yeah, probably. Um, I'll have to find one. It might take me a minute, but yeah, I don't think that's a problem. Oh. Are you you good? Did we get the wrong thing? I'm good. I ate one. Oh, okay. Um, anything else you need? I just want a cigarette. You give me a cigarette right now, I'll tell you everything y'all need to know. Okay. And I can give you a phone call with my girlfriend. Yeah, let me see what I can do. You got a preference? I don't know. That I, I don't give a fuck about anything. Really? Yeah. A cigarette. Yeah. All right, man. This is not Ryan's first arrest. In fact, he should know how the whole interrogation process works. Yet, he is volunteering information to the detective without the detective having to ask very detailed questions. He has instead said, if you provide me with a cigarette, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. The detective at this point is probably taken by surprise, has to step out of the room to determine whether, by giving a cigarette to Ryan Maguire, what information is he going to be sharing. Uh, of course we're empty, but I got a fucking work on it. We should have a cigarette soon. Um, let me do this real quick. What's your last name? Maguire. Maguire. M-C-G-U-I-R-E, right? Yeah. Ryan, Michael. Yeah. Um, how old are you? 
There we go. 32. Your date of birth is? 1945. 85. Where are you living? Nowhere. Where are you living? Say Thomas. Yeah. Okay. What was your last address? Oh, that's one. No. The last place you were laying your head? No. Okay. Okay. Um. Where are you Okay. What's a good phone number for you? It doesn't matter. I'm not probably going to be out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm warm. I mean, I don't know. All the deal with your wants and stuff. And no, I got. I'm not getting. No, I got no phone number. Okay. Um, how far did you get in school? I graduated. Okay. Any college at all? No. All right. You can read and write English. Yep. Cool. So, you've been locked up before. Yep. And somebody read your rights and all. What did that? No, no, that's what I'm about to do. You don't gotta do all that. It's good. Just let me sign paper so I get the fuck out of here. All right. Well, I gotta at least read it to you, but. I'll make it quick. So, what's been going on with you? What can you tell me? Well, you said you you tell me everything, right? What's this one? For, what's this for? We well, got your three warrants, right? Huh? You said you got three warrants. I got a couple warrants about uh, BOP, I and uh, FTA. Okay. What was all that about? I'm not. I, I'm drugs. And I you use drugs? Yeah. Are you? Uh, under the influence of anything right now? No. Okay. I didn't have nothing today. Okay. Um, well, you said you've been staying at the at the motel there? Yeah, I, I stayed there for a couple of days. Okay. What about before that? Um, I can been staying with that lady. Who's that? The used car I had. And Judy? Yeah. Okay. What's your relationship to her? She's like... I don't know, like my stepmom or something like that. Okay. Um, she lets you use the car and everything? Yeah. All right, nice lady. Um, where, where is she at these days? Oh, yeah, listen. I need a cigarette. I'm not saying nothing else. Sell your cigarette. Okay. You know, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. She's gone, too. She's dead, too. Just to let you know, she's dead, too. You're going to charge me that one, too. So I'll tell you where she's at. She's going to get a cigarette. All right. Let's see that it's just in there. Now that I'm here for the one across the street. What's that? I'm here for what? Across the street. Yeah, man. I'm not going to be around the bush with you. That's what it is, okay? Let me get you a cigarette. Man, I'll tell you where Judy and everything is at, so you can charge me that one too. So All right, bro. I appreciate it. Really. Remember, detectives have been trained extensively on how to perform interrogations. So the detective returns to the room without a cigarette. This is to try and get more information from Ryan, make him want the cigarette that much more. So the detective goes about trying to get some basic information from Ryan. His name, date of birth, where he lives, phone number and things like that. And what you'll notice, Ryan says, I'm not going to talk anymore until I have a cigarette and then goes about volunteering even more information about Judy and how that she's dead. This was not even asked of him and the detective must be thinking, again, Ryan's going to be singing all night long. If I can get the cigarette to him, who knows what information he will be sharing. It is also worth noting that Ryan is sharing information willingly so the detective asks him whether he's on any drugs. This is to determine whether the information that is being revealed is done while he's intoxicated or whether he's of sound mind. Also worth noting is Ryan has not asked for a lawyer. If he has asked for a lawyer or if he has suggested he wants a lawyer, this interview process would have stopped. What about that? That's a, no, I like people smoking in here. So, allegedly suck up the smoke. I don't know how good it works, but it's a shot. You see a plug over here? It's right here. Here we go. We get it. Here. Thanks, man. Y'all not going to find Judy without me telling you where she's at. Where she at? Going around. Okay. You all take me there, I'll show you where she's at. Alright, can you explain it to me? I mean, I, she got high, she was getting high, so she asked me to shoot her up, I shot her up with GOD. So, I had a warrant, I wasn't going to call the police. You know. 
Ryan claims that he and Judy were getting high and Judy unfortunately passed away due to a drug overdose. Instead of Ryan phoning the police because he had a number of warrants out for his arrest, he decides to wrap Judy's body in some cloth material and leaves her in a wooden box in Judy's room. And the body stays there for three months. He uses perfume and things like that to mask the smell, but a dead decomposing body, the smell would have been horrific. Neighbors were asking about Judy and Ryan basically said that he was there to take care of her and she had gone into rehab for a number of months and she'd probably be there for many more months. And that's when Cindy was becoming suspicious. So she confronted Ryan and basically said, I don't believe what you're saying. I'm going to call the police to investigate this. And that's when Ryan realized that he had a number of warrants out for his arrest. So he didn't want to be in trouble with the police. He decided to take matters into his own hands and basically kill Cindy. Yo, it wasn't... I just wanted to hit that hotel room. Yo, were they going to hit that hotel room and I never came out there? It's hard to say, honestly. I never got that car, y'all never got me today. You think? I don't know if y'all still knew who I was, walk out of that room, they probably would have got me. Mm -hmm. So, just to make sure I'm following you, okay? You're, you're using dope? Yeah. And crack? It's pretty much anything. Okay. Um, when, when does this situation happened with your son and you couldn't, couldn't get your son back? A month ago. A month ago. Okay. But that kind of set you off a little bit yeah. or something and that's why you've been kind of doing the burglaries and you said you robbed the liquor store too. I haven't really did no burglaries since. Did you get caught in that one? Or? I never stole nothing in that one. Okay. My next door neighbor, next door neighbor. I didn't even steal nothing. Okay. I was just high. I just walked in that bitch. Right. And when you went to Judy's, was that just because... She called me out the blue, helping her get all the drugs. Oh. Okay. And I said, damn, I could just stay here, get rid of her, and just keep using all our money every month. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. See, I mean, and it seemed like it would have worked for a while, except... Cindy. Cindy. Yeah. And she called the house phone over there. Wanted to ask about... Yeah, to ask me questions. About Judy. Yeah. Was, was she a friend of Judy? I don't know. Nobody really messed with her. Like, they were just... I told her that she was in rehab, that she was, like, on a blackout for 45 days, and... How long were you staying with Judy before that happened? What, before Judy? Yeah. Like, a month. Okay. Um... And things were good with her? Yeah. But, like you said, you were thinking... If you can work your way into staying there without her, that's the move. Right. Okay. So when she asks you to shoot her up, you said? She snapped in and she went out. She already, then I shot her up to make sure that she was gone. Okay. So she was snorting? She was doing whatever. Snorting, yeah, snorting, shooting, sh snorting. And smoking crack. So what did she do at that when that happened? She sniffed, and then she was out of it. Yeah, she went out. She fell out. She OD. So then you hit her with the dope to make sure. Yeah, she sniffed the dope and went out once. And then you shot her up. Yeah, I gotcha. And then what did you do? That's when you put her in the box. Yeah, I left her in the bed for all days. Okay. And put her in the box and put a blanket over it or something? Yeah. Okay. Um, when did people start asking what was up with her? When they didn't see her a couple days. Okay. Um, you just said she's a rehab. Yeah. But Cindy wouldn't let go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you're over there with Cindy, you got smoke. Did she start right away with the questions? She was getting... She was asking questions since I came over there. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take the call from her, did you... I already knew I was going... If she had anything, I already knew. I was going to get rid of her. Yeah. Because you were 
You don't want to take a chance of getting caught yeah. up. Okay. So you go over there. I drove past her just this other day and there was cops down there. I was one shot at AMC. Mm-hmm. Where were you driving? A city car. Really? Okay. Where's that? I gave it to someone. Really? Where? The city. So it's floating around somewhere? Yeah. Who'd you give it to? Um, one of them was that deal, deal drove you with. Okay. Do you have a nickname or something? Do you got his real name? I'd like to get the car back to her family. The only way I can do that is to give my cell phone and I call and tell him to put it somewhere else. I'm not trying to get him in trouble. I gotcha. Um. What the police now have is they've got a signed confession from Ryan McGuire. They have a whole lot of evidence from the crime scenes. But what they don't have is the actual weapons used to commit the crime. So, you used two knives when you were dealing with Cindy. One that was on your belt. And a different one, where where the other one come from? I bought them, like from the essay. Okay, so they were both knives that you had on you? Yeah. What did, what did that one look like? The one you said is not around anymore? It's, uh, it's like a regular knife. You know, it's like a folding knife? Yeah. What color? It's like black with cam- camouflage. Okay. And where do you think you tossed that? And you ain't gonna find it. You ain't gonna find it. Okay. So. It's probably somewhere in the truck. It's a fucking dump somewhere now. Okay. You, you know that you put it somewhere in specific that it's taken to the dump? I threw it in the trash can. Where? The gas station. Which one? On Urban Avenue. Okay. Across yeah. the BP. Carol Fuel? Uh, BP? BP right there across the street from Armstead Gardens. Okay. Where yeah. is that? The other day. So that's why I stopped. I stopped there every day and she up. Okay. You remember what time that was? No. Which, was it when you say the other day that you talked to the night? I did. What did I do? I said Friday. The, the murder? Yeah, Friday. Was Saturday. Saturday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like 11, 12 o'clock. So then, when do you think you get the, get rid of the knife? I don't think, I think it was Friday. You sure it was Saturday? Yeah. I think I got rid of it. So the same day or the next day? The next day. Okay. I stayed at duty house that night. Saturday night. I parked the car around the corner and I walked to duty house. Alright. Um, how about your clothes? What? The clothes you were wearing. I didn't have no I didn't have no blood on me at all. No? Okay. Um did you take that stuff with you to the to the motel? I had a pair of shoes, I threw them away. Where was that? I don't even know. Ryan has now confessed to the murder of Cindy, but he has not necessarily murdered Judy. The detectives need more information. Has he been the one that bought the drugs and given it to Judy? Has he been the one that gave Judy the drugs even though she was in a drug-affected state and have the drugs that he's given her pushed her over the edge and killed her? We know that he has lived in her home He has driven Judy's car around. He spent all her money on things that he needed. He has hidden the body for three months in a wooden chest in Judy's home. He has not called the police and let them know about Judy's death. If he had contacted the police, maybe he would not be facing two counts of murder. He may have been only facing the one count of murder, but now this has complicated the whole process. But detectives need more information. Still thinking, you know, that at some point you know, get rid of her and just stay there yourself. Yeah. Okay. And then when she she sniffs, you said she goes out. Yeah. But then she came back. Yeah. The next day. Okay. So you thought she was dead already. Yeah. And she wants. To- I left and I came back to her house and she was awake. No kidding. And she's asking for more. Yeah. Okay. So. You just did you just have some? Machine? Yeah, I had some because I I, I took five hundred dollars out of her 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 safe. So how much do you think she she got? I mean, when you when you injected her? Just a pill. Just a pill. 
but you were pretty confident that was gonna yeah, finish things off. Yeah, she was a little. Yeah. All right. That dope was good. Yeah. I wish I had some now. Yeah. Um. Okay. Anything else I need to know about? Any other nah. dead people in there? Nah, nah, it's all it's more work. Okay. Um. And you said her car is some other guy in the city somewhere. Yeah. And you don't want to tell me who. I get it. You get my phone and I get the number out of there and call this motherfucker for you. Okay. I mean. Unless he got pulled over that motherfucker already. Yeah. Could be. All right. Any uh any other cars I need to know about? Yeah. Uh, uh, any steel cars and no. stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I'll uh, I'll be right with you. I can't give me no soda and some cookies. Yeah. yeah. No, I can't make it. I can't. I was like really calling girlfriend. That's what yeah. I was like. I don't have a problem with that. It's just that involve a little bit more. If I gotta get you a phone and uh, so and I don't know what what she do. If I don't, if I might even try to get her involved for real, if I got you. Yeah, you just want to talk to her? Yeah. Okay. Is it her cell phone? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Give me a look. Ryan would then go on to plead guilty for the two murder charges. His legal team argued that he should receive a more lenient sentence because of his unstable childhood and his drug addiction. The prosecution, however, argued that his drug addiction should not have been a reason for him to go out and kill his stepmother and then kill the neighbor. Remember, Ryan actually killed his own stepmother. He lived in the house. He lied to people. He spent all her money. He drove her car around. And when the neighbor Cindy asked questions and threatened to call the police, he then decided to even kill her. In the end, Ryan received two consecutive life sentences. Now, what do you think of the case? Was the sentence justified for the loss of two innocent women? Please like, share, and subscribe so that we can share even more cases with you over the coming months.